it, it, it's weird, but when I get on the road, I suddenly realise that, you know, it's actually my natural environment. <laughs> For me, the bike is just the perfect travel companion. Motorcycle, I think it's one of the most uh, easiest ways for us to explore beautiful areas, to explore beautiful things, all the things that the world has for us. A motorbike is not about transportation, it's much more... What I'd like to do is just ride along the edge of that field, actually, and put my tent up and cook me food for the night. But as you know, uh, that's not the only thing about being on the road. might say an Indian FTR doesn't look like an adventure bike. Come on, what does an adventure bike look like? What I like about motorcycling is that one minute you're in heavy traffic, almost battling seemingly with life and death. And then the next, you're on a quiet country road, gentle and reposed. And it's almost like a healing process. And you suddenly think, Oh, thank goodness I'm away from all of that. morning I was at the bike shed in central London, one of the biggest cities in the world with a load of London bikers. When I'm getting on my bike, I have my stuff with me, my luggage, I put my helmet on like a horse or as I imagine a horse would be. Now I'm in the middle of the Kentish countryside just mucking about. It makes me really feel I can go anywhere. I'm on my way actually to, to Istanbul. Basically, it's one of the easiest ways for all of us to um, reach some kind of freedom. It's one of the most uh, easiest ways for us to get out of our comfort zone. to explore beautiful areas, to explore beautiful things, all the things that the world has for us, and that uh, many times we forget that they are there. And especially in this time, you know, when mankind learned that everything can be taken away from them so fast, motorcycle is such a simple vehicle to go out there, grab what the world has for you, and to really you know, understand why you're here and why there are so many beautiful things out there. I often think that it's a kind of amplifier because when I'm feeling low on the bike it really amplifies that but also when I'm feeling very good and very joyful then this is also amplified by riding the bike. So the sat -nav pulls me off the B roads onto what I would call an unclassified road, but here in Austria, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a garden. Intimate. 
nearly everything. It's, it's the sound, the smell of freedom, the way to break out of the everyday life. I think this is motorcycling for me. The way you walk to the way you call my name. Another restless night, any other one. It's also a big part of my life. I built it up the yeah, ice here in Switzerland, in Luzerne. Um, originally from London from 1983, and we opened here in, in 2015 and have a huge community. It starts with a baby, or with a banker, senior, rocker. Nearly everybody is, is going in and out, and it's always so respectful and. Everything about, about this petrol thing, the meaning of speed and, and eating well and, and uh, the sustainability also here in Luzerne, it means nearly everything for me. This year it burned down on the 18th of January and uh, so we lost 350 motorcycles. Uh, terrible, terrible, I tell you. <laughs> Still shakes uh, my body because yeah, now we lost so much. Yeah. Straße is a windy mountain road between Austria and Italy. Yeah. So um, from the south part of Germany to the north part of, of uh, Italy, um, there are not too many roads and uh, this is, I think, for the motorcycles, the best road. Well, when she wrapped her loving arms around my neck On the dance floor at Chelsea's bar I should have turned her away, but how was I to see? I was firing, she was gasoline. I saw a 1936 Indian chief, and I said, that's the one. Attila, the owner, has been absolutely charming and when you consider he's given me free access to, to all his collection here, and this is only part of it in fact. He lost 350 motorcycles during the fire, which was devastating for him. And of course, they're not located in their formal position at the moment. They're in a holding area before they, they go into their, onto their final platforms when the museum is, is reopened. So all the great adventurers and the motorcycle travellers would have made their way to Istanbul. Istanbul, which bestrides the Bosphorus, where Europe joins Asia. This is where the journey continues, of course, um, into the Indian subcontinent. Clearly, a journey to Istanbul is one of the great classic overland pioneer routes that have been cherished by some of the great motorcycle adventurers of the world. Round corners, solid like.
This bike is from 1929. This is the one one scoot, which was the one of the best in the end. Uh, all time. It is from 1929, 750 cubic centimeter and 18 powers. I think it was the best bike in the 20s. It's only blue skies on my horizon line, so far from the herd. village of Zaravna in southern Bulgaria on the last day of my leg from London to Istanbul. It's great, I'm really excited. <laughs> and all I've got to do when I get to Istanbul <laughs> is ride back. Why do you go away? So that you come back? You come back with new eyes. People see you differently too. Returning to the start again is not the same as never leaving. This is mental. This is riding into Istanbul. This must be one of the biggest cities in the world. Anyway, here we go. Am I supposed to be enjoying myself? Okay, which is uh, this bike right here. Okay, actually I've never seen one in my life. This is the first time I see it. And uh, as long as Nick is using it to ride around the world, I think it's a good bike.